Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Garden Ramblings, I think today's about, I don't know, February 10th or 11th, I'm gonna really talk about what I'm doing in a way of February prep for the garden. I'll talk a little bit about the soil, vegetables I'll be planting, but what I'm really doing mostly right now is one, getting outside, it's gonna be 60 degrees today, starting to weed out all of my beds. I wanna get a handle on the weeds before the warmer weather comes. And what I like to do is, is, I don't like the weed for sure, but take the weeds, throw them in a pile. After I've weeded the entire garden or the entire space, I'll come back and I'll collect all the weeds. I try to kind of just focus on one task. So for me, getting the weeds out of the growing areas, put in a pile, I worry about cleanup later. It might even be a week or 10 days later that I get to the pile there. Doing the same thing in my no dig garden, Soil looks really good. I'm kind of looking for that as I'm digging through the weeds. I have one, two, three, four artichokes. They survive the winter. They're going to come back strongly. I never got to covering them, which I should have done, but I was lucky. We had a mild winter, so they're going to be okay. And you can just see I'm just taking the weeds and making piles. My goal isn't for this space to be perfect by the end of the weekend because it kind of slows me down. Whenever I think about trying to be you know, more perfect as in I want to remove all the pepper plants, weed everything, straighten up the boards, rake away the leaves, fluff up the soil. It gets overwhelming for me. So my goal, remove the weeds. And you'll see that as we walk through the garden. I'm also taking note of what survived. Even though there's some turnips in there, the turnips themselves, the radishes that you're going to see, they're edible, but they're not really tasting that great. But I'll clean this up leave some of the turnips in there because the greens are going to be delicious. Even though the turnip may not be the best, I'm going to harvest the greens. I also have mustard greens, pak choy, there are carrots growing, spinach growing. All those vegetables give me a clue of what I can be planting in February. I'll be doing shorter videos focused on what to plant in February, how to take care of your beds, but in today's you know, 25 minute rambling, we'll just talk about it. Purple cabbage survived. My towers, as we get to the other side, you could see I had some lettuce left in there. They died off. I have my strawberry tower on this side. This is going to get cleaned up. We'll visit the other towers where I've already cleaned up the plants. But anything that is brown, you know, looks like this, I'm removing. You just want to have the core be nice and green. Keep those. This year, I'm going to fill up any pockets that need a little bit more soil. I know that these have been taken care of for the last two years with respect to adding in organic granular, fluffing up the soil. So this year I'm just going to water them in with AgroThrive water soluble fertilizer. That will get them off to a great start. My towers are in good shape for strawberries and would have plenty of strawberry plants. As we walk around again, I'm just noticing what is alive because that's what I'm going to plant now. I'm going to plant pak choy, radishes, spinach, carrots. We'll get to those. It's nice to see that at least one of my rosemary plants survived. And I'll just be going through weeding stuff out. Like there's a bunch of radishes in here. I don't know if this will work or not, but you see all the green here? This radish is just rotted through. The greenery will, st greenery will steep grow. Let's try again. The greenery will keep growing. I'm going to harvest and use that, but I'll be looking for like radishes that are like this. I'm just going to remove them, but there are some pretty solid radishes in there. So those are the ones I'm going to keep let them grow the green, let them grow seed pods. I'll be eating those while my crops of radishes and stuff come in. I like that the polycarbonate worked this year. I just left it on just like that. And you can see all the spinach in there is doing extremely well versus spinach that was sitting out here did okay. For some reason, this one did all right. Don't know why. It's really weird plants do different things, but the protection of the polycarbonate just kept it a little bit warmer and the spinach did a lot better there. I didn't even cap the ends off. If I would have capped the ends off, this would be even larger. But this is about to come off. I'll be using that plastic, laying it flat down on the ground, and I'll be seeding carrots. Some of the lettuce made it. Red romaine, what I'll make notes is that the red romaine really does well in the freezing temperatures when it gets below 25 Fahrenheit. And that's gonna be okay. Carrots are coming up. I have a lot going on. Even peas are back there. I'll probably plant some peas in February, actually, to see how they do. But I'm starting to think about soil prep, weeding, what I'm going to plant, and I'm going to be getting my first round of crops in. I guess we'll come over here. That's 
walk around this way. The trellises will all get repaired. I'm doing garden repairs. I'll be moving different trellises around. And in here, it looks like chickweed took over, but there's a lot of romaine lettuce in there. So I'll be trying to figure out, you know, how to weed around there so that I can eat the greens that are coming out of there. A lot of the greens or a lot of the plants that overwintered, they're going to be thinking they're in their second year, so they're going to want to flower pretty quickly. But, you know, more lettuce in there. That's a butter crunch. This is, oh, this is actually a black Spanish radish right in there, which is cool. We'll see how that does. All the beets, the ones that aren't soft all the way through, like the radishes, I'll leave in place and they're going to grow nice greens. So I'm going to have greens first as I prep the rest of the garden. So I'm just excited to be out here. And you can see, of course, it's in disarray, but you know, that's how it goes. That's what a garden is like. Broccoli didn't make it. I wanted to see how long it would go and it made it until the temperatures dropped into the teens. So what happens is, is the crown browns out. That plant died off. This one looks okay. Who knows if it's going to survive. But broccoli really needs temperatures above 25 Fahrenheit for it to manage and to be okay. Collard greens look pretty good. So I'll be cleaning up this space, keeping things um, that look good. I'll be keeping them again just for the greens and that will get me started for the year. That's horseradish in there. I'm going to raise the soil on that side. Some of the things, it's starting to rain so hopefully we finish out. It's not supposed to rain today. Some of the things to keep in mind, like in this bed here, I am going to be putting in transplants or stronger plants that can pop through this grass. So I'm just going to pretty much leave this like that. That would be, for instance, peas can poke right through that grass, no problem. The garlic is all coming up. This is normal. Probably time to water this in. That would be a February chore with a water-soluble fertilizer. I've got a red, German white, and music variety in there. They all really, it looks like they all came up. So that's, that's pretty cool. So this is my hardneck garlic section. Pak choy with chickweed, I think that is. And here's a good example too. Like the cabbage made it, but some of it browned out. I don't know what's going to grow from here. But if this comes back pretty strongly, like these leaves are kind of rubbery and don't taste the best. But if they take off, I'll have some purple cabbage leaves for salads and stuff like that. The trellising, like this main trellis is going to get moved somewhere. Things are going to get cleaned up. So I'm just walking through, kind of taking a look at what survived really well. Arugula did extremely well. Those are plants that I will be planting again late winter. They didn't get any, or I'm sorry, in the fall. They will winter over. They survive. I didn't give them much protection. The other thing you can do, and that tells me that, you know what? The w winters here are getting warmer, so I'm going to be able to grow a lot more. If you, throw d if you threw down alfalfa or something like that, you can kind of just work it into the surface. That'll be fine for planting seeds because that alfalfa has been sitting there for a while. You could still put it down like where you're going to do your transplants. Like maybe there's not enough time for the alfalfa pellets to kind of break down and get into a position that, you know, seeding wouldn't be impacted. Seeding, direct seeding wouldn't be impacted by it. But this is fine if you're putting in transplants. I'm also really liking the soil. This was a layered method. It looks pretty good. Transplanted, our tomato transplants will go in here so I know that everything will be fine. We spin around this way. Good example of a lot of weeding that I did. I mean, there's piles everywhere. But these radishes survived and they look pretty good. They're not hollow, they're not rotted out. Some uh, pak choy, and you can see pak choy flowers really quickly. So that's gonna go in as seeds sometime this week. Carrots are coming up. The garden looks pretty good. Clearing out my beds, it's starting to rain, so we're gonna have to take a break and we'll pick up somewhere else. Not sure where I left off, so we'll just pick up right from here. PVC, I'm going to leave in here, you know, the little rainbows. This was going to be a place where I had a low tunnel I was going to grow in there, but I just wanted to take a break, so I decided really not to do that. Just planted some stuff, see what's going on. I'm going to be putting chicken wire over this, and I'm actually going to grow cucumbers right in here. So it'll be a centerpiece of cucumbers. They should hang down, provide some shade down there for some other plants. So I'm changing things up a little bit. You know, I wanted to keep going, wanted to cover that up with some plastic growing there, but just ran out of energy. And I'm like, I'm just going to take a break, you know, take a break. Got arugula coming up in the back. That's going to be beautiful. The big plant didn't make it in the freeze, which is fine. It was huge. 
The other smaller ones are taking off and doing well. The kale that's under there is working nicely or is growing nicely. That's a great way to extend the season and to start early. I may clean this up. Well, I have to clean it up. It's full of weeds down there. Not sure what I want to grow in there this year. I'm going to be concentrating really on plants that I want to eat and I'm trying to work up a relationship with somebody I think I mentioned before where this produce can be sold um, at his place. So I may be growing more peppers in there. I'm going to be growing a little bit less different kinds of plants that I use more for videos and, and for teaching and more plants that I want to eat and more plants that people would want to purchase from you know around this area. Things generally look pretty good. Peppers have to get cleaned up in there. I'm actually going to probably do like a pepper plant, a kale plant, a pepper plant, a kale plant and maybe put my three or four kale plants in there because the white flies that seem to plague the brassicas here in my garden leave peppers alone. So I'm thinking maybe if I put some of the kale in between there that I want to grow through the summer, maybe the white flies won't find it. Maybe they'll leave it alone. You know, just general cleanup. I mean, things look pretty good because I put the effort in prepping the soil. You know, the weed seeds probably came in when I was putting down compost or something. That's why you see so much growing on there. But otherwise, I think things look pretty nicely. The brambles look good. Let's go over here to the towers. This is what I was cleaning up yesterday. And I'm just removing everything, throwing it on the ground. Cleanup will come way later. But this is what I'm leaving. You know, the nice strawberry leaves that look like that. All the towers got cleaned up. They're going to get fed with the Agro Thrive. If you're interested in a great organic water soluble fertilizer, check out my video description. I recommend Agro Thrive. And they look pretty good. They, and strawberries are able to handle really cold weather. It got into the teens a couple times this year, got below 10 degrees Fahrenheit for at least one night. But these can even take colder temperatures, you know, not prolonged for weeks and weeks and months, although they are pretty hardy. I just leave them in a the tower, is my point. People ask me, what do I do with them? Do I protect them? Here in Maryland Zone 7, I just leave my strawberries out 24-7. There's also some in here. They took hold. They look pretty good. They're going to get fed with the same water-soluble fertilizer. The other thing you can do is if you didn't really get to prepping your beds, if you have organic granular, they're all pretty much the same, get what's on sale. You could scatter that down wherever you want to be putting down your seeds or your future transplants and just let that break down for a couple of months. I know it's February, so a lot of people won't really even be um, fully gardening until April, May. So you have time for that organic granular to break down. This was all cleared out. This will actually get watered in now with the water-soluble fertilizer and then future plantings will go in there. Coming into this space, I was growing radishes. They look good. They're going to be ready to go with edible radishes. Spinach in there. You can't see it, but there's bunching onions back there. Ne <laughs> needs a little bit of water. I forgot to water it. But aside from that, they're growing slow and steady in here. This was a little bit of an experiment. I will do this, you know, each year, but I didn't really try and overly protect these with a little extra warmth. I wasn't interested necessarily in getting full radishes in January. Next year, if I start in here earlier, I can have full crops in there. It all just depends on what I feel like doing next year. One thing that I want to mention now is because the weeds are coming up and life is coming back, I'm going to go over to the soil over here because one of the things well, here's a stop. Let's just stop here. This is the example. Like I just threw in some alfalfa that was extra. This is where I put in my eggplant. This is where I put in some cherry tomatoes. Now's a great time again. Just go break all that up. Mix it into that top inch of soil. What I was really happy with is just how nice the soil in here turned out. I had cardboard over this. Leaf grow down, compost. And this just looks really good. It's getting to be exactly where I want it. Perfect for direct seeding. It's a really, really nice soil. Because everything is growing, when I was digging through here, I was finding worms. They looked healthy, they looked great. But that's also a signal that your snails and slugs are gonna start coming out and they're gonna start looking for food to eat. So this is the best time. And if you take anything from today's video, it's a great time to put down your slug baits. The slug baits with iron phosphate or sulfur bait scatter them broadly don't pile it up throughout your garden the snails and slugs will find that that will, will yeah that will reduce the population 
and that's going to keep damage from getting to your plants. And you want to do this ahead of time, like prevention for diseases and pests is the best way to go about it. So if we take care of the snails and slugs now, we're not going to have to be worried about the holes in our plants and we're going to greatly reduce the population. Blueberries look nice and green. That's what I'm always looking for is that, and they're even starting to bud up, is that there's just nice green growth. I'll prune these out in some capacity, you know, down the line. Strawberries in my containers. And again, I want tons of strawberries. They look really good. They're going to get the same water soluble fertilizer. Fruit trees look good. They have to be pruned. They're kind of massive. But for fruit trees, you're looking, you know, at the buds. I got to get some dormant oil on there too, because you want that to get onto your trees before the buds start. I didn't expect it to be so warm. Like I was expecting, you know, for March for these trees to start getting buds on there. Overall, you know, things are in pretty good shape here. And it was because I put effort in towards the end of last year, at the end of the season, to get things in shape. So it's kind of paying off now. I'll be doing more focused videos on seed starting, what you seed start in February, getting the soil taken care of. But you got a little bit of an overview of what I'm doing in the garden now in February. Thanks so much for watching. Highly encourage you guys to do your chores in small batches, I guess, or small pieces. Don't feel like everything has to be perfect. Weed it out, leave the piles behind, get to the piles, clean up later. You know, work just a corner of the garden. Don't feel like you have to do everything out there, you know, over the weekend. Little bits at a time, and pretty soon it adds up. You catch up, everything's taken care of. Well, I should say, things are taken care of 90%. There's always something more that we have to do, but 90% is still a good grade. Enjoy your gardens, don't stress yourself out. And I hope you guys stick with me for this year. I think it's gonna be a great year. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. Enjoy your weekend and spring will be here soon. Thanks for watching.